In today's episode of Reinvent Hollywood, we looked at the form and the question of if the feature film form is no longer going to be our dominant form of entertainment or business, what will take its place? But I remember at Sundance, my shorts that I had at Sundance, it was like, oh, short films, there's no market for that. Um, you know, that's just a calling card for a feature which people said, oh, there's ne you'll never make a living making shorts. And um, we and my team are compensated quite well for making a short film series on the web that now may be going to television. It's no longer like, are you making a film series or a theatrical? It's like a screen series, really. This is kind of the year I feel like we've all been talking about when everything truly is blurred and there's new definitions for form, like how long something needs to be is how long you think it needs to be, and not how long some format said it needs to be. In, in a lot of the work uh, that I've been doing, I've been trying to find ways to make the technology more invisible to what the actual process is, to find ways that I can evoke emotion and empathy or create some type of a reaction from, from an audience and, and bring them in and, and make them actually collaborators in the work. Head Trauma was an example where we would leave, encourage people to leave their cell phones on and so they could interact with the movie via their mobile device. Incredibly awkward uh, in terms of what was going on, you know, and, and very disruptive and chaotic and messy. But I think a lot of the experimentation is that way. You know, you're not really sure how it's going to work because we're in this in-between phase. We're inventing the form. We are building this language. But the language that we're building, made of errors, mistakes, and, and trials, is exciting because it involves us. It involves us as people. I think, you know, a lot of that sloppiness that Lance is referring to it comes from, I think, creators trying to figure out to what level is their audience really able to accept the type of interactive project that you're trying to construct. It, we're not alone in the struggle that we have. It's the same struggle that's working across the disruption that's happening due to digital and technology across all industries. Um, but certain industries are, are, are ahead of us because of file sizes, because of technology, wh whatever it is. So I would say, um, you know, those, an embrace of some looking at other models, um, sharing what works and what does not work very candidly with each other, where the failures are, and, uh, you know, finding ways that we can better, um, you know, potentially share audiences amongst ourselves would be a really great starting point, I think. The analog world was about completion, about perfecting uh, something. You had one version of it, you put it out there, it was locked in stone, and there it sat. But the digital world, you know, it is about evolution, about iteration. It will constantly be changing. That, that product, you know, uh, becomes something else later down the line. Technology, when you say it so, it, so often people think of it as this thing that's separate from us. And really, techni is, just means tool. And it's just an extension of us. And story, the way I think of them, is story, I really want to get an idea out there. And stories are the vessel for the idea. And the different vessels, it could be a feature film, it could be in a short film, it could be in a tweet. I'm interested in spreading ideas that are inside the vessel of stories. For me, when I think about like, what are the innovations that get me really excited, um, it's those ones that are like really accessible. And oftentimes those are like the simplest kinds of innovations, but they can be really the most successful. You know, things as simple as like, you know, storytelling on social media, which is definitely nothing new. But I mean, these are some of the things that are like, that have the, the widest audiences and the broadest um, and deepest and most engaged communities. And, you know, kind of getting back to this idea that we were talking about earlier, of like being continuously surrounded by screens. You know, it's an extension of wanting to have the story with you at all times. And so this idea of like being within that that social space and being able to tell a story there, you know, in something as, as simple as like interacting with characters, I think is really, really exciting. What I'm seeing happen is the need for story as an experience. 
and the boundaries are being pushed beyond the actual technical gadget that we use, which is the screen. I see how strongly the need for story to step into the real world, into the physical dimension of one's experience uh, and expand the notion that it's limited by a screen and that it can become more than a product, it's a process and it is an experience. What can we do to, to make sure that we still are a global culture of diverse stories, diverse artists that aren't forced to always please, aren't forced to follow to the lowest common denominator. You know, the role of art, you know, often is to take people out of their comfort zone, to help you understand people very different than yourselves. Maybe what's holding us back is also to do with the industry and um, how industries are still very siloed and how things are financed um, and how artists are financed. But even though the audience um, and technology has blurred all of those formats and the idea of communication and storytelling, we're still being financed, supported in the same old way. One of the biggest problems with creators that creators are facing these days is that it takes too long to create. It's a really difficult model to be able to sustain a community around that. So this idea of rapid prototyping, being iterative, sharing more, sharing sooner, uh, is, is incredibly important. That concept uh, that it's not just success that tracks you, you, you know, advances you up the corporate ladder, it's failures that will, will, will hold you back. And that fear of failure, that inability to institutionalize risk taking, you know, to expand the form, that nature of business to replicate only the, the past successes is one of the holdbacks. And it's kind of like we're always like kind of going forward by looking through the rearview mirror, which is like a Marshall McLuhan thing. But I, I think that in, in terms of like there's one side where there's a lack of risk and um, and uh, that the, the failure culture doesn't exist in terms of failing fast and learning from it. I think people's bios should include more things that didn't work too because in what they learned from them. And so, I mean, in that spirit, what I've been very hopeful about is Sundance has been doing something called the Sundance Transparency Project, where they're asking all the filmmakers to lift up their kimonos and talk about numbers and, of course, impact, that question of impact, it's not just money, it's who you reached and all of that stuff. I think that this is going to be a really a first because Hollywood certainly doesn't do it. So I think that idea of how we can use data and embrace it as a creative medium in the way in which we tell our stories is going to help us not only find and tell those stories, but it's also going to help to be able to measure them and us be able to share that insight with each other and with the audiences that we're, we're working with. I'm very excited. I'm hopeful. I know there's a lot of the old ship needs to burn down because we got a very new exciting time. If you believe that you can invent this, reinvent Hollywood, and I'm not even calling it Hollywood. So reinvent film. I know there's a lot of things we need to fix, but let's fix them. That's it.